Recently, Escape Motions released a couple of new papers for Rebel. Now that's not something I would normally do a video on, but these ones caught my eye because they were uh, actually wood textures rather than paper textures. Um, and wood as a surface is something I've used previously when I was doing traditional paintings. Um, and also last year I was experimenting with doing some of my own paper textures and trying to get some wood textures to work with. So I was quite interested to see what these new textures could offer, how they might work with the nanopixel technology and to work out whether they're um, worth the money. So I thought I'd take a look. My name's Pete. Welcome to Basement Picasso. So if we go to the Escape Motions uh, website uh, and then have a look at what they've got available under the shop, you'll see that they've got the main software packages at the top. Uh, and some of these are still on their special offer at the moment, which is really good. And then down below, if you scroll down, you'll see that they've got the papers, uh, canvases uh, and other things available. So the two that we're interested in today uh, are the, the wood veneer traditional and the wood veneer exotic. Uh, and these are classed as full colour papers, which we'll talk about uh, shortly. Um, £11.99 gets you three papers uh, for each of the packs. Uh, and if you click on them, then it will give you uh, a little bit of a preview and you can have a look at the textures and some of the marks, the paints, the thickness, uh, the colours, etc. and how they sort of interact with those canvases. And that's obviously what we're going to have a little bit more of a look at uh, in a bit more detail uh, as we go through this. So you can flick through those and get uh, a sense of what it's going to look like. Uh, and then if that's something you're interested in, you can add that to the cart and uh, buy it. Uh, once you've done that, it will give you a download uh, of a small file and that's very easy to install uh, into Rebel just by dragging that onto Rebel once you've got that file downloaded. So let's open up uh, Rebel and have a look at those textures. So once you've downloaded the papers, you should be able to just uh, open Rebel uh, and then drag them in and that will install them. Or the other way you can do it is just to go to File, Import Assets uh, and then click on the, the paper uh, files that you've downloaded. Once you've done that, you should then be able to do File, New. That will bring up the standard uh, new artwork window. And what you should now have under the Canvas options is when you click on that, you should see that you've now got a set of wood veneer uh, papers uh, that you can use. So there's three in each pack. If you've got both of them, then you'd have the uh, six papers. So you can click on those. Uh, it'll show you with the icon that these are uh, uh, colored papers. Um, now what that means is the, the paper itself has a, a default color, which you can see when you click on it. Um, and that's the, the kind of underlying color of the paper. It's also got a little bit of color uh, variation in terms of, sort of hue and texture and tone uh, as part of that. So it's effectively a colored paper, um, which gives you a bit of variation, which is really good. The downside of it is that it means that you can't actually select a different fundamental color. Uh, it will be locked to that default color. Um, and I'll show you in a minute how you can get around that uh, personally, that's one of the things I find a little frustrating with this as a digital painting package. Um, it's fine to have a default colour, but it would be very helpful to be able to select other colours and then still get the colour variation based on that uh, new chosen base colour. Um, so I'll show you how you can uh, work around that. Um, so if we pick one of these, we'll start with the uh, oak veneer, have a look at that uh, and then do OK. And I'll just stick with the standard size that I tend to use for these. Um, and that will then create uh, a new 
a default canvas uh, with the, the wood texture that we can start to have a look at. I'm going, I'm going to stick to generally using the standard brushes here. Uh, I'm not going to use any um, fancy custom brushes because I want to focus just on the underlying canvas texture that we're getting from these. Uh, what I will do is I will use the colour pigments and I will also uh, be using the nanopixel. So these are both two things available in the pro version um, that we'll be using today. So uh, what we'll do is have uh, a little bit of look at some of the uh, brushes and the textures and the way that they, they start to uh, interact with the, the canvas uh, texture or the, the wood texture that we've got. Now, one of the things that I've got set up at the moment is the, uh, the pen that I've got at the moment, it's got two buttons on it. The default one, the uh, lower one I use as the, the color picker and that's absolutely standard. I always have that set to be able to quickly uh, pick colors. The other one I tend to use when I'm painting as a, a move command um, because generally I'm quite often a bit more zoomed in and I want to, to be able to move the canvas around. Um, but with the wooden textures, uh, one of the things that's quite good is to, to actually to be able to erase. Um, so what I've got at the moment is the second button uh, is actually um, doing a hot swap over to the erase. So it's equivalent to pressing uh, five uh, and uh, then allowing you to erase and uh, that works quite nicely with these textures because of the way that it, it kind of erases back and leaves a bit of that um, underlying texture uh, sitting there. So that's that's the two buttons uh, that I've got uh, set up and configured um, and you can see that uh, certainly the the wood texture uh, is, is certainly there in terms of the, the way that the brush is interacting with it, um, the way that the, the colours are kind of mixing into it. Um, and then when you do the uh, erase, that leaves little traces of the, the colour, which to me feels very natural in terms of the, the way that paint would sort of sink into the grain a little bit. And if you sort of scraped it off, you would be left with a, a bit of that colour texture still coming through. So so that to me looks and, and feels uh, very natural in terms of, of working on this kind of surface. Um, obviously you can use sort of thicker brushes and thicker paints and just build up those, those textures, um, get a bit of the thickness to the material. And obviously once the material gets very thick, then it's very much dominated by the, the thickness of the paint at that point, the underlying uh, texture isn't uh, really kind of coming through particularly. But again, if you use the eraser, you can kind of scrape back into that um, and really feel like you're kind of digging through it um, and getting a, a really good uh, sense of the interaction with that underlying uh, texture. So so that certainly looks good uh, and seems to, to work well um, as a very natural sort of feel to it. So, as I said at the start, the, the colour of the wood, it's a very natural wood. It does, you know, it's got a, a sense of that kind of wooden panel. Uh, it's quite sort of light um, and, and a very nice sort of base wood colour to work from. Um, but if you're using some other tools, so for example, if you're um, doing some pe pencil sketching, then you might find that uh, actually that as a base colour is, is maybe just a little too uh, dark and actually you want something uh, maybe a bit lighter to to be able to, to work on. Um, so one of the tricks you can use is if you um, pop up a new layer, just pop it underneath uh, and then go to fill, um, just pick a, a white fill, fill that in. You'll see that there's still a little bit of the texture left that's gone very light. Uh, what you can then do is just uh, knock the opacity of that down and uh, that will then uh, lighten up your underlying texture. So you've still very much got that kind of wooden texture. Um, but if you want to do a, a pencil drawing or you want to do something, uh, a very sort of more subtle um, watercolor painting, for example, 
um, you can use that trick to, to lighten it down. And equally, you can do something very similar. If you want a, a darker background, you can use the, the fill, um, pick a, a, a nice dark color. Um, and then again, I would uh, typically just knock that back very slightly so we get the color variation, the tones and the uh, hues to, to be able to, to work on. Um, and then just go back to um, being able to paint on that. Um, and if you if you prefer working on a, a a darker surface and you like to work sort of dark to to light that way you can get the the wood texture um, and it still feels uh, in some ways to to me I think this feels even better that you you really sort of see the the underlying texture kind of coming through um, and and building up uh, as you start to to paint on it. Um, so as I say, I, 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 I wish that you could set that underlying base color and it wasn't that sort of fixed color for the paper. Um, but if you do want to, to change it, then you, you can use that, uh, that mechanism. Um, so that uh, it gives you a sort of general feel for it. The, all, all the tools will tend to, to interact uh, quite well with this. So, um, if you want, uh, for example, to, to do some uh, watercolour, uh, because I'm going to do this over the paint, I'm going to put the, the re-wet down, put the diffusion speed up uh, a little bit. Uh, we should then be able to uh, just put some uh, colour down on that, uh, and hopefully you'll see that runs down. It's obviously interacting with the paint and the thickness of the paint, um, but equally it's picking up the, the underlying canvas texture and um, certainly in terms of feeling like it's interacting with the grain and picking up in the, the sort of the, the sort of thin wood texture and grain um, that, that certainly seems to uh, to work pretty well um, and then other tools so for example the um, the pastel tools they certainly engage uh, with the the underlying canvas texture very effectively in fact I'd say this this is probably almost one of the ones that that brings it out um, best uh, and uh, certainly gives you a sense that that's uh, really um, picking up on that uh, that sort of wood texture surface. So you know those those tools all seem to, to work uh, and it certainly um, for me has a, a very convincing feel for uh, what the um, sort of wood panel would, would tend to feel like if you were uh, working on it. Um, if you look at the, the other textures that are, are available, um, I think the one thing that I've, I've sort of noticed, and it goes back to this kind of colour, is the, the base colour of these is, is all actually very similar, so you're not getting sort of light panels and dark panels and things, um, so it is much more about the, uh, the actual uh, underlying texture. You can obviously change these um, and then carry on. Uh, obviously that won't change the way that the original paint has interacted with it, uh, but if you um, then start working on on that uh, on a new layer, for example, then that's going to interact with it. Um, and again, in terms of the the feel of the brush and the way that it feels like it's kind of floating over the surface and and just interacting with that texture, um, you know, to to me these these really do feel very very convincing and 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 really very satisfying to uh, to work with uh, as a texture. So that's the, the basics of these. Um, what I'll do now is uh, just do a little, uh, very quick demonstration painting. I'll just use a reference photo. I'm not going to do anything fancy. There'll just be a bit of colour cloning because I really just want to focus on the, the texture uh, of the underlying wood paper. Do a picture and then have a look at uh, how that's worked and uh, how effective the, the underlying texture is. Um, so let's... Uh, uh, let's have a look at doing that.
that's the demonstration painting finished. You can see the little reference that I was working from. I, I very quick painting just to look at the textures and how the brushes were interacting with that paper and we can certainly see that it's really brought out the, the sort of wood green uh, texture and the, the way that we were looking at things uh, earlier on. Um, we can export that image and uh, when you export it uh, using the NanoPixel tech, uh, technology um, there's a couple of options there that you can uh, use. So when I was painting the picture um, I had the paint texture set at 5 um, and that was certainly bringing out uh, a little bit of it um, but you can adjust that as you do the uh, export um, and what I found when I did that was the um, picture if we look at it with the, the export set at 5 um, there's certainly a, a, a lot of the, the paper texture, the, the wood texture, the green uh, coming through um, but I think that one actually um, possibly works better if you actually uh, use the higher setting um, and then we can uh, really sort of bring out the the strength of the, the wood grain uh, and I have to say when you uh, zoom in um, it's certainly it's worked very well um, it, it's really convincing the way the, the brush and the, the paint was interacting with it was um, really uh, felt quite natural uh, and certainly the, the sort of resulting textures uh, from this are uh, convincing uh, and and very realistic and uh, compared to, to what I've worked on in, in real life um, I have to say that uh, is a particularly satisfying experience to to work on as a, a digital simulation of traditional materials and traditional textures then uh, I have to say that it really does work uh, very effectively so to sum up um, I think there's definitely some positives. The textures are very realistic. They, they're definitely very satisfying to work with. They've got a, a nice feel of a wood panel and the way that the, the paints and the, the watercolours and various medium would interact with them. Uh, and I think as a, a set of textures they, they definitely offer something a little bit different to the other paper types uh, so it's good to see a bit of a uh, variety coming through like that. Um, I think on the downside uh, for me they're a, a little bit too expensive I think $11.99 for three textures is just uh, maybe a little bit too much if it was maybe more $7.99 maybe even $5.99 um, I think that that would feel a, a bit more the, the right sort of value um, for me um, and I think one of the things that I always look at with that, uh, and I've been very critical in the past of things like Coral Painter um, for the, the cost of the upgrades and how much they charge for all their, their brushes and becoming just a, a sort of brush engine. Um, and I think that that's one thing the you know, I'm a little cautious with in terms of the direction with the uh, Escape Motions that the total cost of all their papers um, is now starting to exceed the, the core cost of the actual package um, and there's a little bit of a danger that it just becomes a, a paint engine to support the, the papers and uh, you know I'm always a, a little bit wary of that kind of direction with um, packages so um, it'd be good to see them uh, maybe come down a little bit or maybe include more within a, a pack uh, I think that would feel more like uh, value for people um, I think there is a wee bit of a problem with the colour, it's just a bit of a pain to have to kind of overlay colours to get different variations. It's nice that they, they're coloured papers and that they have, um, you know, different colours within them, but I'm sure you could do that as a kind of variation and then under change the underlying base colour uh, to make that work and, and just make it more digital and, and more flexible. Um, and similarly, the angle of the texture, I think this is one of the first ones I've really noticed, that it's very vertical. Um, and I could see if I was doing a lot of paintings using this, it'd be quite nice to, to be able to change the, the angle of the, the texture. Um, 
And then the last one is, is similar to the thing around it being too expensive. Because the, the underlying nanopixel structure is proprietary, you can't make textures as far as I'm aware at the moment. Um, and, you know, it's not kind of open to the community to, to make your own textures. Um, I think that, that kind of limits things. So that might be another direction that if they, they made it so that other people could create uh, textures um, and papers and, and things, um, I think that, that could be really helpful going forward. Um, but overall, um, you know, I, it's certainly something I, I'm uh, happy to have picked up. I, I will definitely be using these uh, going forward uh, and uh, very much uh, enjoy working with them. So I hope overall that that was helpful. Um, if you've got any thoughts or comments uh, around the, the papers, the textures or anything else you'd like to see me do, um, please feel free to leave some uh, comments below. I'd very much like to hear from you. Um, otherwise, I hope that was helpful um, and hopefully we'll see you here again soon. Thanks for watching.